Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. For many of us, Grasshopper has been in our professional life for many years. However, for a lot of people new to Grasshopper and Shape Diver, it may not be that obvious why Grasshopper is so popular in so many industries. For this reason, in order to give everyone a good idea of the power of the software, we will share five reasons why we love Grasshopper. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to our channel if you want to get more content about Grasshopper and Shapediver. So let's get started. So let's start with the first reason why we love Grasshopper. Because it has changed forever the way architects and designers work. It allows automation, fast design iteration, reusability of very frequent tasks and more. But what does this mean in the everyday life of an architect or a designer? So let's do a simple example. Let's say that you want to create a truss. So if you use tools like AutoCAD, then we can see that you can create some um, parametric models, parametric blocks, but they are very limited and they require a lot of work to be able to create a very simple model. So for example, in this tutorial created by CAD for Construction, we can see that they are trying to create a truss that you can change based on these arrows, the height and the length of this truss. And when you click on this arrow option, then you can go from two to four to eight base. However, that's all. If you want to have more base, then you will have to create a complete logic for that to work. It's very, let's say, human dependent. You have to tell the algorithm exactly what you want it to do. And you cannot set very generic rules that you could reuse in different projects. But let's go and see how this would work in Grasshopper. So here we are in Grasshopper. Let's try to double click in our canvas and look for something that creates trust. So since that there is something already that creates a 2D trust, it's a component that we can use. And it asking me to have curve A and curve B. And let's create just a line where our trust will be. And let's create another one below here and let's see what happens. So if I put here a cure, you can see that automatically this component, this script was able to compute a 2D truss based on these two cubes. But what if my truss now is longer, has a different shape, I need to use it in a different project? Well, as you can see, this is dependent on these two curves. That means that if I start moving this point somewhere else, then my truss will adapt to that cube. But let's say that I want this to be a bit more creative, maybe controlled by some mathematical function, for example. So here we have already an example prepared where we have some parameters, where we have roof length, roof height, and some steps. These steps are where we are gonna sample our function, our mathematical function, which is created by this graph mapper. So if we right click, we get the graph types. We have here the scene function, and we have several options that we can use. And through this graph mapper, we're able to transform our coordinates and then create this final cube. Now let's say that we want to use this cube to create again our truss. Now, what if we want this to be actually a 3D truss, not just a 2D truss? So we double click again, we look for truss, and here now we have a space truss. So let's use this one. So it says that it needs a surface, and it needs uh, the amount of divisions in the U direction, the amount of division in the V directions, and other parameters. So now we need a surface, and we have here just a curve. So how we go from this curve to a surface, let's copy paste this code. So now we can reuse what we did. We can reuse it again to be able to create another curve that we will use for our surface. We have the first curve, we have the second curve, that creates this loft that we have here, which goes and connects these two curves. And now we just want to create a um, 
trust through this surface. So let's use our component here and that's it. And the best thing is that if we want to change our design at any point of our project, we just have to come here to the origin of our model and just start to play with our parameters so we can iterate between designs. So if I start to move the graph, then you can see how our roof starts to automatically adapt to that graph. And everything just because we created the logic and not directly the uh, geometry. Now, while we were working in this literal definition, grasshopper model, we were using two main components, this 2D truss and this 3D truss uh, components. These components are actually not native from Grasshopper. So if you download today Grasshopper, you won't find these components. Why? Because they come from plugins. So if I just click here to check which plugin creates this, this plugin that we see here, which is Launchbox plugin. And that takes us to our second reason why we love Grasshopper. And it's because there is so many plugins and tools that are offered to us for free. So Launchbox was created by some developers, which are users also of Grasshopper. And they found a way of creating a logic for this 2D truss and the 3D truss and way many other components, as you can see here in this plugin. And they just offer to the entire community of Grasshopper this plugin for them to be able to benefit from it as well. Now, this is just one of these plugins, but there are many plugins for Grasshopper, hundreds of them, which expand the power of the tool exponentially every year. There is more and more plugins that are developed which work with Grasshopper and make us Grasshopper developers even more capable of building more and more powerful tools. So if we go to foodforrhino.com, then we have here Launchbox and we can see that this was developed by Nathan Miller and there's a description of it, um, what it does, what are the components that it involves. Now let's check another one we have here. Ladybug tools, which is mainly for visualize and analyze weather data in Grasshopper. Let's go to the next one, Pufferfish, created by Michael Pryor. And Pufferfish is also one of the most downloaded plugins in Grasshopper because it offers lots and lots of tools to be able to work with meshes, with cures, with surfaces. So it's a very generic plugin that expands the capabilities of working with different kinds of geometry. Then we have Paraket. This plugin helps us creating patterns and working with patterns. You can see here different examples of how that looks like. Then here we have OpenNest. OpenNest helps us automating the process of nesting when we are creating production files for laser cutting or CNC machines. Here we can see how it works. Here we have some examples of how it is able to nest objects inside objects. There are plenty more plugins for Grasshopper, which you can find in Food for Rhino. And we have also a video where we just talk about plugins. We talk about what they are and where you can find them. And you can find the link to that video down in the description. Now, as we said, these plugins are not developed by the core team of Rhinoceros and Grasshopper, but they are developed by the community that makes use of this software. Therefore, that takes us to our third reason why we love Grasshopper. And that's because of its very friendly and active community. If you want to get started using Grasshopper, you will be surprised by the amount of support that you will receive from the community that is already using it. Almost any question you may have is already answered in the forums and in the social media groups where the community gathers to support each other. Let's have a look at some Facebook groups where the community gathers. For example, here we can see in Grasshopper Rhino in Facebook, we can see different tutorials that the community is um, sharing with everyone showing some tips and tricks to use in Grasshopper to be faster with it. Now here we are in Grasshopper Parametric Tutorials group, and we can see that the community also shares how they convert all of these definitions, scripts into actual objects that you can use. And in this other group, Grasshopper Tutorials, we can see that some users also uh, ask some questions about how to do some something in Grasshopper. And he received almost immediately answers. So now there is 11 comments. So the users of Grasshopper and Rhino are all the time active and willing to help. Now, of course, we have also the formal forums that are in MacNeil, this course that MacNeil.com. And here you can find lots and lots of forum threads where you can answer pretty much any question that you may have. If you have 
any new questions, you can just put it here and you will get answers very quickly from the community, but also even from the core developers of Rhino and Grasshopper. Thanks to this very active community, very friendly community, some of the users have become also influencers and some of these influencers are even important architects or important designers in big companies around the world. So let's have a look at some of them. So for example, here we have Michael Pryor. Michael Pryor is the creator of Pufferfish. As I explained, Pufferfish is one of the most downloaded plugins in Grasshopper. Michael Pryor is also a computational designer at Nike, one of the biggest companies in the world. Then we have something like parametric architecture, which is a bit more open, so it's not just focused on Grasshopper. However, you can here find a lot of the community because, well, it's one of the biggest uh, Instagram accounts with almost 1 million followers. Then we have some YouTube channels as well, like this one where you can find different tutorials to learn Grasshopper and Rhino. Now we have also this channel, which is more specialized in Grasshopper, and they are also in Instagram, and you can see all what Parametric House does, a lot of experimentation with the software, so you can use this, all of these experiments for your specific purpose. Finally, I'm going to share the account of Arturo Tedeschi, who is a recognized Italian architect. Some of his work was even mentioned in the Forbes magazine, and as you can see, he's also the author of a recognized book, which talks also about how to create parametric architecture with Grasshopper. And this book is a good start to mention our fourth reason why we love Grasshopper. And it's because it is an easy way for architects and designers to get into coding. So as the name of the book suggests, this book is about algorithm-aided design. So now the designer of architect is not explicitly creating a design, creating a geometry, but implicitly creating an algorithm that will help them get to that final design. So if you know already how to create algorithms with Grasshopper, now you're able to think how to solve problems in a different way through algorithms. Now, if the Grasshopper components or any plugins that are available for Grasshopper are not enough for you to solve your problem. Grasshopper also lets you directly code in C Sharp, in Visual Basic, and in Python. If you don't know how to code in any of these programming languages, the good thing is that Grasshopper is a visual programming language. So you can easily visually interact with the software and create logics. And this will help you to make the transition between visual programming and actually creating code. But now that we know how powerful Grasshopper and Rhino is, then how much is going to cost me? This tool must be very expensive if it is so powerful. But actually that takes us to our fifth point, why we love Grasshopper. And it's because it is affordable. Even though it is so powerful, Grasshopper and Rhino are just available for 9.99 euros. And it is a license that is permanent and do not expire. If you want to, for example, if you have a previous version of Rhino and then you want to upgrade, it also has a cost, but the game is very small and is again permanent and do not expire. There are also special prices for students or faculties and for schools. Compare this with other softwares, like for example, the ones supported by Autodesk or SolidWorks, and you will see what a huge difference it is. So there you have it. We hope that these five reasons why we love Grasshopper will provide you with good foundations to consider getting started with Grasshopper. Do you have any other great reasons why you love Grasshopper? Make sure to let us know down in the comment section. If you want to check what other Grasshopper developers are doing with ShapeDiver, don't forget to visit our website, shapediver.com, and I will see you in the next one.